Good. You got me? Because you want to use the video camera. It's videoing now. Okay. What we're going to do is make a little feeding tray, a homemade feeding tray for our Melipona hive here. This is an experimental hive I have at my home. And we're just going to mount this. I'm putting a little feeding tray on here. And what we're going to do, we're going to start feeding this species of Melipona. And this is the Melipona minima. This is the smallest one. They call it minimus, minima. It's the smallest one. We're studying actually three different species. The Itama being the largest of the species. So we're just going to put a little feeding tray on here. And in a few seconds, we'll put some of the uh, encapsulated stevia on here. Give me the stevia. These are microcapsules, 600 microgram microcapsules made with uh, encapsulated stevia compound in water, distilled water. And we're going to, this is about a half a gram, and we're going to try to feed them that. And within, uh, within I estimate, uh, two weeks, we'll be able to go inside the hive and check to see if any of the stevia side compounds are being taken and uptaken inside the hive. So, uh, let's, here, let me show you the inside of this hive. The inside of this hive, this is a new, new experimental hive. I've only had it online for about three weeks. And you can see little critters in here. Notice here this tear that I made two weeks ago. They've already repaired the, the tear with the propolis. So I'm gonna tear it some more next couple of days you can see the this is the Tama Minima on this hive over here we have the um, we have the uh, Trigona uh, Itama and this is Trigoma Minima real small these are the stingless bees we think of the 30 species that are available here in Malaysia there are only three that we believe can be used to uh, create new infrastructure and start uh, a new kind of beekeeping here because the Mellifera, uh, the common uh, honeybee, the European honeybee does not fare well because it's so fat, it's too fat here. These ones, and, and it's aggressive. Uh, the the Mellifera gets aggressive in the hot weather, and these little critters are very well acclimated to these climes here, one degree off of the equator. So this is, uh, this is good, and let's see, we'll see in a few days whether or not they come out and eat it. Over here, if you will, this is one of the species of the Rabidiana that we're using. Look here, look, Joy, how fast they're coming. See them coming down there? And you might even see them, they're going to, that'll act as a landing pad for them. See, they see this is new here, so they're all coming around. And these are real gentle bees, they're docile. They're not real aggressive. They don't have a tendency to swarm. These are a nice, this is a, a nice species for people to use at home, the small bee farmer. Okay, over here, Joy, look at these ones. These are the Itama. These are the big ones. If you come over here and look, this is what we're feeding them. This is the Stevia, Rabidiana. And as you can see here, these are the Itama, a lot bigger. They're roughly three times the size of the Minima. So we've got one in between that we're going to use as well. Now, I'm going to mount a similar feeding tray on here. I don't want to get them too stirred up, but let me get that other feeding tray and I'll put that one on there and we'll give them a little bit of the Stevia as well. See if they'll start using it which I'm pretty sure they will because it does have a wax base. It is sweet, and I do have a synthetic nectar that has a 50% component of natural sugar inside mixed with a 3% component of the steviol. So 
This is the first time this stuff's ever, this has ever been done. No one's ever done this to our knowledge. If they have, they haven't published. And we're publishing. So. Okay, there's that. Well, already got one. See, they like, bees like a landing pad. They like to be able to land, someplace to land. And they come in for, a, just like anybody else, come in for a landing. Okay. Now, I'll put a little bit of this Stevie on here and step back. I don't know how much time you've got on your machine. I do. Let's put, this is roughly one gram. Let's put a gram of that stuff in there. Step back. And let everybody go to dinner. Let's see. Put that one on the land. Keep focus on the landing pad. See if they go in and investigate. Now, they the first thing that will happen... The foragers, these are foragers that are returning to the hive, okay? Somewhere in that forage, yeah, among the foragers, you'll have the, uh, the ones that go out and search. There are bees that go out and search for new sources. And when they find a new source of food, they'll send literally a pheromone trail back to the uh, hive so that the other bees know where to come to get uh, fresh pollen and uh, stuff, etc. Okay, now, you can just watch them for a minute, see if, if uh... They're, they're looking at it. I'm well, they, they will eventually land mm -hmm. on it. They haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's only been there two minutes. Give them, you mm -hmm. know, give them five minutes or so. Yeah, Once I they find out what it is... they're trying to, to decide well, who gets to be the first one. <laughs> well, what, what's happened is... The, the gang leader, the boss who goes out and finds food, hasn't okayed it yet. So no one's going to touch it until that one bee comes and says, Hey guys, look what I found, a new source of food. So that bee, <coughs> excuse me, will leave a pheromone trail back to, the, back to the hive so that the other bees can find this, this source of food. That's the way it happens in nature. Everything goes on the pheromone. Do you have that propolis yes, that I gave you? Yes, behind you. Okay. Okay, behind me. Where? Okay. Yeah, just keep your eye pan on that for a minute until I call you over here. I'm waiting to see them land on it. The one that lands on it is the head of the foragers. When the head of the foragers finds it, they'll send a, they'll send a, a signal back to the hive that we found a new source of food. Okay. Joy, while they're discovering that, come here. Pan on this for a minute. Okay. Come on over to here. Okay. Here's a tip for the beekeeper. For the beekeeper at home, here's a tip for you. Now, we, we have a, the opening here. This is in the tree trunk. And we don't want lizards or frogs or toads or anything because we do have the tree frog here in Malaysia. So what we want to do is to prevent something from getting up and eating all of our individuals. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of propolis from inside of here and an old piece of Coca-Cola bottle and I've cut it thusly to make a con conical shape um, mechanism so that it makes it difficult for anything to get into the hive except the bees which have which they like to go into a hole anyhow. So I've taken some propolis which is real expensive stuff and the bees love it, by the way. And I'll just take and I'll put this over the hole and I will press this on there. And there you go. There's your protected entryway into that hive for these bees. Now, they'll start going. Once they figure it out, they'll come and start going inside of it. And they will also, in the next couple of days, they'll build a ring of propolis around there because they love to seal stuff up. So, they'll start going inside of there. Nice little gadget, something to remember if you're setting up your own hive at home. And you can see the ones that are coming back to the hive. Joy, if you can get in closer, you see the ones that look yellow? They are loaded with pollen. Yes. They are absolutely loaded with pollen. And they are going in, they are going in and coming out. So the ones coming out will leave a pheromone trail. So, and you can see this one here. 
look, he is absolutely loaded, or she is absolutely loaded with pollen, doesn't know where to go. Yeah. They like this spot. They're finding it. They're finding it. And the pollen sacs are on their back legs, by the way. The pollen sacs are on the back legs. Yeah, beautiful. There, one just went in. Look at the big ones she up on there. That one figured it out. They are loaded with pollen. Look. So this is a pretty good area here. Yep, this, the first one just went in. This little there. place. Now they'll leave a pheromone trail, as I said. They'll leave a pheromone trail, and they'll go right into that hive. Yep, the first one has already figured it out, so yeah. they'll they'll follow along. So, here. and that will protect them from Hopefully. the tree frog, and from the geckos that are in this little garden here. We have a nice little setting for them. We have a nice little setting for our uh, apiary, home apiary, mm -hmm. here under a sour mango tree. So they'll take a lot of their nutrient and pollens right from the sour mango. So I'm expecting this honey to come out of this batch will be taste a little bit sour. So this is very nice. And this is the first time that encapsulated stevia has ever been fed to these bees. And what we're trying to accomplish is to develop a new kind of honey that it's a designer honey designed for use by diabetics. Diabetics will be able to eat this honey without any adverse effects. Effects. Okay. Cool. There they are. I'll go back over here and close this.